Hello and welcome back to Introduction to Blueprints in a project-based learning where we're going to be exploring part four, rotation changes and the loop rotator node inside of our Blueprint Mesh Transform that we've been developing. Let's jump in. Quick recap of what we've done so far in this project. We have gotten to know the basic layout of the Blueprint system with the viewport and event graph We've created a mesh with a trigger volume and initialized some variables, uh, creating several custom variables and multiple categories where we can hold our variables so that they're easy for the user to understand when they're looking at the blueprint. We then went on to learn about the trigger volumes with the begin and end overlap, followed by understanding how the timeline node operates when we are animating using alphas. In the last video we went over how to use our initial location variable and the transform parameter variables that we created for the location and apply those using a linear interpolate vector node that was then passed through to set the relative transform location of our mesh. We then demoed a few examples of this in our test level. In this video, we're going to be taking the same principle and applying it to the initial rotation. I've gone on and highlighted all of these nodes and then hit C and created a comment box and called this location changes. You can also turn down the alpha of the box so it's a little bit more easy on the eyes, or you can change the color to be whatever you like. Uh, personally, I enjoy the transparent alpha look. We begin by grabbing our initial rotation. I'm going to hold control and we're going to be setting our initial rotation. It's a very similar workflow that we used with the location changes. The main difference is that we will be using a rotator node instead of a vector node when we are doing our linear interpolation. Off of our initial rotation, I'm going to drag off, type in lerp, and it automatically shows us that we need to be using a rotator because we are dealing with rotational data, not vector data. I will get the roll, holding control, pitch, holding control, yaw, holding control. Now we have the three variables that we're going to be using. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is highlight these three addition nodes, control C and control V. And that just makes it easy. So we don't have to type in the same thing twice. In blueprints, copying and pasting is definitely something you want to get used to doing. So if you'll notice, we had a vector plus a vector, and then we split this apart. Well, what I want to do here is a rotator plus a rotator. And using the same plus sign and finding the add function, you're going to see that that is not giving us a rotator, no matching add function for rotator. Okay, so that is not how we're going to go about adding the rotation. The way that we're going to be using this is with another node called Combine Rotators. Combine Rotators is very similar to adding vectors. It's just dealing with rotational data instead of vector data. We're going to follow a similar format. Hover over the B rotator, right click, split the struct pin. Now we are given our roll pitch yaw. I'm going to take my roll, plug it into the roll, pitch into pitch, yaw into yaw. Return value is a rotator, and B value on the linear interpolate on the rotator is also a rotator. The next thing we're going to do is grab our alpha and plug that in here. I'm going to double click, create a reroute node, just to clean things up a little bit. And one thing that I suggest using here is turning on the shortest path. What that does is it will just, very self-explanatory, it will make sure that when you're combining the rotators, you will combine them in the shortest path possible. Uh, I have found occasionally I get mixed results if I do not have 
shortest path turned on. So in order to get the uh, cleanest result for the animation, I suggest you use the shortest path. Before I plug this in, I'm going to highlight everything, hit C, I'm going to call this rotation changes. We have our return value from our linear interpolate rotator. I'll be plugging this into the rotational transformation of the relative transform of the mesh. Compile, save, and let's go and test it out. I'm going to turn on snapping at 500 units, hold alt, and drag those back. So they're a thousand units away from our location changes. And then you'll see we have multiple values across all of them because each one of these is a different uh, axis. Reset, reset, reset. And we'll start over here. I'm going to minimize location, minimize scale. I want to make this rotate by 90 on the X, 90 on the pitch and 90 on the yaw. So again, 90 on the roll, 90 on the pitch, and 90 on the yaw. I'm gonna hit play. You'll see we have the yaw rotation, the pitch rotation, and the roll rotation. In the next video, we will be using the same workflow to develop the scale changes. Thanks for watching. Bye.